All right, we've made it to our last topic in this C Linux uh, module, uh, and that topic is debugging. And in order to motivate uh, this topic, I want to uh, walk you through what is an unfortunately all too common scenario um, that uh, students find themselves in, which is, okay, it's 11 p.m., uh, I just wrote 200 lines of code for the project that's due tonight. All the functions are there. Everything uh, that the spec said should be there is there. Uh, I've done now, right? Um, and you know, sort of uh, as a last minute uh, thing, you think, oh, you know, I should probably run some tests just to make sure that it works, right? Um, and you know, of course, it's not working, right? Um, but of course, it looks like it should work, right? I, I can't tell you how many times I've had folks come to office hours. Um, and, and say some variation of this, right? Here's the code, it looks like it should work, right? Um, and, and of course it always does look like it should work, right? Because you wrote it to work, right? Um, and so I would encourage you in this course to, to take a different approach. Uh, and so I'm going to introduce some terms from software engineering. So if you have taken CS345, you may have already encountered some of these terms before. Um, but I'm going to encourage you in this course to um, follow a methodology that is referred to as test-driven development, uh, where you sort of, you write the tests first. You figure out what needs to work, and you have, you, you sort of, you work from there and, and you write the code uh, after you've determined what needs to happen. This is a very popular software engineering technique. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a really good idea. Um, and so the idea is that uh, first you describe the behavior of correct code. Before you write any code, you think about what correct code would do and you take those requirements and that behavior and you encode those things in a series of test cases to test all the individual pieces, uh, making sure that you consider all the corner and edge cases at least as best as you can. And you go ahead and you write these tests and you put them together into a test suite that is easy to run uh, and, and reproducible. Once you have the test suite, then you begin writing your code. Um, and now you have some indication of when you're done because you can be continually running these tests as you get new things working to verify that they are working and that you're making progress towards uh, being done. Um, this doesn't mean that you might not write more tests as you are going, uh, but it, it means that you, you sort of have the goal in mind when you, when you start, or at least um, some sort of milestone. Um, and so in order to help you work using this uh, technique in class, we are going to be providing a test suite for you. So you're going to get a, a complete set of tests. Not You're not going to have the source code to all of the tests necessarily, but you will be able to run the tests on your own. And that will give you something to aim for as you're working on the project. Um, but in some sense, this is a test suite that's easier for us to use than for you to use uh, because you didn't write it. Uh, and so I would encourage you to think about writing your own tests. So either uh, putting some code in main or looking at the test suite that we've provided and figuring out how to add your own tests. Um, and I would encourage you not to, strictly speaking, rely on the provided test suite. Um, be able to have tests that you're confident running and understanding uh, and get those in place before you start writing code. Um, this could be as simple as I'm going to run this program and it needs to print this thing just to make sure that I understand what's going on. And then you write the code that prints the thing and then you run it and you verify that it worked. Um, and, and part of this is working incrementally. Don't try to do everything at once. So um, I'm also going to uh, define another term here, which is a software defect. So this is uh, a software defect is an error in the code that produces incorrect or undesirable behavior. We colloquially call these things bugs. Um, there are many different kinds of software defects. There are syntax defects, logic defects, integration defects, uh, concurrency defects, uh, and there are many causes for uh, these defects. So maybe you just made a typo when you were writing the code. Uh, maybe the code is wrong. Uh, there is some sort of design flaw. Or maybe the spec itself was ambiguous uh, and that got encoded into the program code itself. Uh, but in, in all of these cases, what I the way that I find this most useful, um, the way that I find most useful to think about this is that there is really this mismatch between the user's expectation or your expectation of what your program is doing 
and what is actually happening on the machine. And the problem here is that there's a difference between the symptom and the defect or the proximate cause, the thing that you're noticing is wrong, and the root cause, the thing that's actually the, the thing that's actually at the beginning of this uh, causal chain. Um, so you know your program crashes, but that's not the bug, right? The bug is the reason that your program crashed. And debugging is really the process of starting from the former and working towards discovering the latter. Because you can't fix a symptom, you have to find the defect and fix the defect. And debugging is that process of starting from, oh, I'm getting a seg fault, and chasing it all the way back to, oh, I made a typo here, I need to fix that typo. Um, and I like to think of this process as basically the process of just continually asking, why is this happening? My program's encountering a seg fault. Why is this happening? And you need to figure out, well, it's seg faulting because you know this particular pointer is null. Well, wait, that shouldn't be happening. That pointer shouldn't be null. Why is this happening? Why is that pointer becoming null, right? And so you can just keep asking these questions. And as you keep answering those questions, either you're going to find the defect or you're just going to keep uncovering more questions um, that will ultimately lead you to the defect. This is really one of the most important practical skills in programming. And unfortunately, it's not really the sort of thing that I can just sort of, you know, sit here and record a video showing you, you know, teaching you how to do this. This is really something that you kind of have to learn by doing, which is partially why we have you do so much coding. Um, in our courses. Uh, and in this course in particular, we, we're having you do a lot of individual coding because uh, it will help you develop your debugging skills, starting from uh, a symptom and working towards uh, what's wrong. Uh, with that said, uh, I, I'm always more than happy to help you uh, with this. I, I know it's something that, that comes easier to some people than to others. Uh, and uh, while you're taking a course with me, you should always feel welcome to come to office hours if you're having trouble debugging something. Um, because, you know, chances are, you know, I, I have a little bit more experience doing this uh, maybe than you do. And uh, I can, you know, even if I can't necessarily find the, the, uh, the problem right out, I can maybe give you some more things to think about and some more things to investigate that will hopefully get you closer uh, to finding the root cause and, and then fixing it. I would also like to recommend it a book at this point. So uh, there's this book called Debugging uh, by uh, David Egans, and it, it gives nine rules that I find are very helpful uh, in uh, thinking about how to debug. Uh, again, this is not, you know, reading this book will not make you a perfect debugger, but it'll at least give you a lot of things to talk about. And uh, the author tells a lot of uh, stories, some of which are, are, are uh, somewhat humorous about uh, uh, bugs and defects that um, were encountered over uh, their career. Um, so, you know, the, the rules are listed here. Understand the system, make it fail, quit gu guessing and look, divide and conquer, change one thing at a time, keep an audit trail, check the obvious, get a fresh view. And, you know, if you didn't fix it, it isn't fixed. Um, so I would strongly encourage you, um, uh, if you have some time, to go to this website uh, and get the book uh, and, and read through it. Um, the nature of C being, uh, at least in the modern uh, landscape of relatively low level language. Uh, this makes it possible to explore the kinds of things that we want to explore in this course, which is why we chose to use C in this course. Um, but as we've alluded to before, the power of C comes at a cost. It is much easier to make a mistake in C uh, than it was in Java, or you know, the mistakes that you can make uh, are much more difficult to find. Uh, and so debugging in C is going to be harder than it was in Java. Um, and the failure point is almost always not where the actual bug or defect is. Uh, and so as you debug, again, the main question you're going to be asking is, where is the earliest point at which the program diverges from your expectations? And again, this is easiest to do by working backwards. So start from what is broken, ask why that is happening, figure out why, and then either that will show you where the defect is, or it will raise more questions, and you'll have to keep g going further and further back um, to find that earliest point at which the program diverges from your expectations. 
Uh, some other useful questions to keep in mind as you're debugging are, what are the data types that we're dealing with right now? Which memory regions are involved? And what is the size and the lifetime of the variables? Um, and these are questions that I will often ask in office hours. So if you uh, do come with a, a debugging problem, uh, it would be useful if you could spend a couple of minutes thinking about the answers to these questions uh, before coming to office hours, because it's likely that I will ask these sorts of questions um, as we're working through um, a problem that you're experiencing. So. Um, I already gave a demonstration of a debugger, but uh, a debugger uh, is just a program that allows you to examine another program while it's running. You can uh, generally execute the program step by step. You can examine the contents of memory at any point while the program is running. You can add breakpoints and watch points so that you can stop at particular uh, places while the program is executing or when a particular memory location changes. Um, and some debuggers actually allow you to reverse execution so you can kind of step backwards from uh, the place where the symptom was so that you can uh, sort of unravel the chain that leads back to the root cause. Uh, deb debuggers are more useful with extra debug uh, information from the compiler, uh, and you need to compile with the dash G option in order to enable this. Uh, and it's also useful to disable optimization when you're trying to debug, because often optimization can make it more difficult to understand what's going on in the program. So uh, this slide is a quick reference to GDB uh, that it would be useful to kind of have open while you're uh, using GDB at first. Uh, all of these commands can be abbreviated to their first letter. Um, there are some resources about this in your textbook as well. And uh, there is also a, I, I did a, a demo in an earlier mini lecture uh, of stepping through a program using GDB. So uh, you should probably watch that at some point. Um, I, I very highly recommend that you become familiar with using GDB. It will be very useful in this course and in any future course where you have to do any uh, programming in C, which is going to be at least 361 and potentially your advanced systems elective as well. Uh, finally, one other tool that you might find helpful is a tool called Valgrind. Uh, Valgrind is actually a tool framework, uh, and so uh, there are many different tools that work on Valgrind. The most useful uh, tool is the default tool, um, which is MemCheck. So MemCheck is the one that runs if you don't uh, tell Valgrind to run anything different. Uh, it searches for memory leaks, it searches for uninitialized variables, it searches for all sorts of other memory problems. And so if you suspect that you're having a problem with memory, um, <coughs> I highly recommend that you use um, that you run your program with Valgrind and, and look at the output to see if it helps you uh, figure out what's going on. Um, you can uh, we're going to use it to find memory leaks in your program when you submit it, uh, and you can also use it to help uh, find memory bugs. Uh, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, just run your program as you normally would, but put the word Valgrind in front of it. Uh, it your program will run a little slower than it normally does, uh, and that's just Valgrind doing all the analysis in the background. So again, I. I uh, I very much hope that you will take the time to learn a little bit about these tools because I really do think that they will help you during the semester and um, similar tools exist for almost every programming language out there and by learning how to use these tools effectively you'll make your life much easier for uh, the remainder of your career.